SpaceX's latest Starship prototype, SN15, has been on the suborbital launch pad since 8th of April. Last week, the prototype was installed with all three of its Raptor engines. These new green nozzle Raptors are the upgraded Raptor engines that SpaceX's propulsion team has been working on and have potentially addressed the problems that the engine faced during the previous high-altitude flight tests. After several delays, Starship SN15 finally completed a full-duration static fire on 26th of April. And based on the road closures, there can be another static fire test today, that is 27th of April. Recently, FAA has also given a green signal to SN15's flight test by placing a temporary flight restriction on 28th April. However, it can potentially get pushed ahead because historically, all the Starship prototypes have required some sort of engine replacement after a static fire test. So with this, Starship SN15's high-altitude flight test can potentially take place this week or early next week. So in this video, we'll take a brief overview of how SN15's flight test might look like and what differences it has compared to the previous ones. Before getting into the video though, if you're new here, do consider subscribing the channel to learn more interesting stuff about SpaceX and Starship and the future of space flight in general. Now, let's get started. The ascent profile of SN15 will be similar to the previous prototypes. Starship SN15 will lift off using all of its three Raptor engines. However, it is important to note here that during the ascent, all the three Raptor engines are in a low thrust configuration. It might sound weird, but even though the dry mass of the current Starship is about 200 metric tons, the Raptor engines are still very powerful. If during ascent, all the three Raptor engines are throttled to maximum thrust, then it can potentially destroy the entire prototype right at the launch pad. And as you might have guessed by now, once Starship gets further into its flight, the total mass keeps decreasing as the propellant is expended by the Raptor engines. SpaceX's Raptor engine can throttle down to about 40% of its maximum thrust output. So as the mass of the rocket keeps decreasing, the Raptor engines too gradually throttles down in order to make sure that vehicle's acceleration does not cross a certain maximum limit. However, at a certain point in flight, usually at about t plus 2 minutes 15 seconds, the three Raptor engines are just too powerful. So at around this time, one of the three Raptor engines is shut down intentionally and the control of prototype is transferred to the remaining two Raptors. And then again at about t plus 3 minutes, one more Raptor is shut down. At this point in its flight, the prototype is just about a minute away from reaching its apogee or its maximum altitude. At this point, even the single Raptor engine is throttled down significantly. SN15 is expected to reach the maximum altitude of 10 km at about t plus 4 minutes 20 seconds. At this point, the prototype will perform the belly flop maneuver. The belly flop maneuver is where the prototype goes belly first against the atmosphere and the controls of the vehicle are transferred from the Raptor engines to the aerodynamic surfaces that are present at both sides of Starship. After successfully completing the belly flop maneuver, the aerodynamic surfaces would take complete control of the vehicle and would make sure that maximum surface area of Starship is exposed to the atmosphere. This would make sure that maximum energy of Starship bleeds off in the atmosphere itself. After the descent phase comes the landing maneuver. The landing maneuver is where most of the previous prototypes have experienced problems. Starship SN15 will use all of its three Raptor engines to flip the Starship vertical. And as mentioned earlier, the Raptor engines are very powerful. As a result, Starship will shut down one of its three Raptor engines and complete the final phase of landing using the two remaining Raptor engines. Previously, SN10 successfully completed the flip maneuver, but the prototype used a single engine during the final phase of landing. Even though only a single engine is required, using the two engines would provide SN15 the much needed redundancy where even if one of the two Raptor engine has a lower thrust output, it can be compensated with the other Raptor. This landing approach was going to be first used in Starship SN11. However, as we know, SN11 just blew up during the flip maneuver. So, we'll be seeing the new landing burn in action for the first time with Starship SN15. With the new and improved Raptor engine and also various improvements in structure, avionics and software, there are just two possible outcomes for Starship SN15. Either the prototype will land successfully and become the first Starship prototype to soft land, or it will face a completely new problem and undergo a rapid unscheduled disassembly. Either way, excitement is guaranteed for sure. That's all for today's video. If you like the content, do consider subscribing the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.